Chiefs Kingdom. We're back with another podcast for that ass. And we've learned that the Chiefs are still all in on D-Hop. But is he contemplating retirement? Let's talk about it. Steve, Jeremy Fowler from ESPN and Arrowhead Pride are reporting the Chiefs are still talking to DeAndre Hopkins. Before we get started on DeAndre Hopkins, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. 95% of our viewers are not subscribed. We're trying to get to 20K before the end of the season, so do your boys a favor and hit that. Also, hit the like button to get this out to more Chiefs fans. Mike, Jeremy Fowler reported it. There's still contact between DeAndre Hopkins and the Kansas City Chiefs. What have I been saying, man? The Chiefs want this guy, and he wants to be a Chief. They do. That's why it's getting drug out. That's why this is getting drug out. Let's check out the video, man. He visited the Titans and the Patriots last month, but is still undecided. Could he be heading to Kansas City? And just in time, because let's welcome in our senior NFL writer, Jeremy Fowler. He can answer that question. Of course, Jeremy, we're counting on you. So where do the Chiefs stand with signing DeAndre Hopkins? Well, the Chiefs have kept in contact, I'm told, with DeAndre Hopkins' camp. They have certainly some interest. Problem is money. They don't have much of it. They're really tight on the salary cap. Now, they extend defensive tackle Chris Jones, who has a $28 million cap hit. That would free up some money where they could go after Hopkins a little more aggressively. But that deal might not happen until closer to training camp or even after. So I would consider the Chiefs on the periphery right now with the Titans and Patriots who hosted Hopkins in for a visit a couple weeks ago. Still firmly in the mix. Dude, it sounded like sounded like the Chiefs are in on Hopkins. Uh, they're still waiting yes. on Chris Jones. We've been saying this forever. As soon as they can get Chris Jones taken care of, get this extension, it looks like D-Hop is in play, Steve, and he's waiting around. He doesn't want to be in New England. He doesn't want to be in Tennessee. 110%. He has been waiting on the Chiefs to make him an offer. And like Jeremy Fowler said, we're not the only ones saying this. Jeremy Fowler's out there saying this now. They're waiting to get that Chris Jones contract extension, free up some cap money, and be able to offer DeAndre Hopkins right. something that is worthwhile. And I think that he's going to be a chief, bro. I just have this feeling about it. Hey, you're not the only one. There's another. There's, there's some other people coming out and finally getting on board with that. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, though, had actually brought up retirement. Uh, this is what Dov Kleiman reports. DeAndre Hopkins says he'll retire from football once he's not a 1,000-yard receiver. He says, I'll retire from football when I'm not a 1K yard receiver. With that said, I was on pace for 1,400 yards last year. One significant injury in 11 years. I might be playing till I'm 37 the way I feel. A lot of Chiefs Kingdom, Steve, they're like, he's old, he's washed, he can't run, he can't run routes, he can't do anything anymore. D-Hop is on a, he's on another wavelength with this. He thinks he can play till 37. So at 31, he's not worried about it. He thinks he's got six years left in the tank. We're scared to sign him for a year. I think it's a big nothing burger, Steve. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've had to talk to people about this before to say, hey, he hasn't had a thousand yard year in three years and stuff like that. It's like, guys, he was suspended last year for six games. If you take that and add it to it, he was on pace for 1,400 yards, like he said. Right. And the year before that was the one significant injury he's had in his 11 year career. When he was playing last year, Mike, D Hop was still on another level. I mean, he just was. He was the best receiver in football against man coverage. Right. Just throw the ball to D-Hop, and he's going to grab it. And what have I been saying over and over again? We don't even need him to be elite like that. We just need him to be on the field. Because if people have to game plan for right. either D-Hop or Travis Kelsey, then God bless you when Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore and MBS start tearing your ass up. Right. We just need them to suck up another double team. You can't double right. him and Kelsey at the same time. There's not enough defenders to do that. Steve... A lot of people are starting to come around to D-Hop. Nick Wright was one that said, hey, we don't need uh, D-Hop, and, and we don't right. need, nobody will be able to develop. We can't do this, and he was not on board. Well, the concern is the Chiefs are going to get him. Why is that a concern, Nick Wright? What are you doing? I do like the fact that he's finally coming along. He must be an all-chiefed-up fan, Steve. He's, he's finally getting to the point that, hey, he don't want to go to New England, and uh, I think everybody can start to see it. I think it's just common sense. Like the other guy on the show, I don't know his name. How in the world can you think that DeAndre Hopkins wants to play in New England? Right. What is he? He thinking? does not. He does not want Mac Jones throwing him the ball. He doesn't want to go to Tennessee. He doesn't want Ryan Tannehill throwing him the ball. He wants to play in Kansas City. He wants to play with Patrick Mahomes. It's the best quarterback in the league. It's the best coach in the league. And it's the best chance for him to win a ring. And that's what DeAndre Hopkins keeps saying that he wants. So if there's any truth to that whatsoever, we're going to see – at the beginning of training camp, whenever they get this Chris Jones extension done, we're going we're gonna to see that signing, baby. Right, and I know there's going to be somebody in our comments saying, Juju wanted to have Mac Jones throwing him the ball. No, Juju didn't. 
Juju no, he has didn't. a bum knee. Nobody was going to give him any money. He took them as a consolation prize because they give him 33 mil, 11 million per season. That's the he only reason to. Juju's there. He's not there for Mac right. Jones. Uh, we can get over that. But with that said, Steve, uh, time's yours. That time's yours. Time's yours. The time is yours, Chiefs Kingdom. We're going to look at some of your comments on our last video. What do we got up first, Mike? First comment, Jermaine Jones, 189. He says, I knew Sneed was the one who had the most missed tackles last season. This is referring to our poll we put up, Steve, our question, who had the most missed tackles out of Reed, Sneed, uh, Thornhill, and Willie Gay. Uh, Sneed actually led the most. He had 15. He said, so if the Chiefs would trade Sneed, I wouldn't hate that idea. Sneed is a good player, but the Chiefs will not pay their corners big money at all. Go Chiefs. Steve, Jermaine Jones is not wrong. The Chiefs do not like to pay corners. I don't know how many more times we can say this. Jermaine Jones, preach it, brother. We've been trying to tell preach everybody it. this. They're not going to pay Legere Sneed a big crap ton of money. It's just not going to happen. The Chiefs do not pay corners like that. The last one that they paid like that was Brandon Flowers, and they cut him after, what, two years into his contract? It's just not going to happen. Uh, I love Legere Sneed as much as the next Chiefs fan, but he does have some issues. Uh, they hold him up on a pedestal. I've noticed that. Right. Uh, he is a good player. I I'm not taking anything away from Snead. He's been an excellent player, especially for the value we got him in the draft. Yes. But, I mean, he, he's on his contract year. Legereus Snead is good enough to go make a lot of money somewhere, get a long, nice-paying contract, but it's not going to be from the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, that's what I'm That's what I'm saying. I don't think that Legereus Snead might not be back in KC. He may still sign here. He just cannot ask for that top-dollar money. If that's what he wants, and that's what he should go do, because this is his first big contract, he may as well right. go get it while he can. Uh, it, he will. Short time of the game. I, I just don't think he won't ask for that. But I just don't see Brett Veach setting the market with a corner like Legereus Sneed with us being so deep. I don't see it. That's not to say he won't be back in KC if he takes a, a sweetheart deal. Um, I'd love to have that's him back. That's not going to happen. I just don't see it. So we're going to move along. Uh, comment number two from Stephen James. He said, which of the four of those guys we just named drew the least amount of flags? Um, you would be surprised. The least amount of flags last year went to Justin Reed. He actually got flagged zero times. Uh, Legereus Sneed was tied with Juan Thornhill at five. They both had five. So oh, Legereus Sneed. Oh, Reed and Sneed. Right. Well, it, I like the old Reed and Sneed. It makes sense that a corner <laughs> that constantly took the number one guy. Sp right. Spags did that a lot. So well, yeah, yeah, it's nothing Can, to that's get a point Snead, that I, man. That's a point I want to touch on just a little bit. Like Snead did have the most missed tackles. Snead did let up the most receptions in the entire NFL. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can say that make Snead sound bad, and that's not necessarily a knock on Snead. He was asked to do the hardest jobs on defense last right. year by Spags. So I mean, it's not that he's a bad player. He played really well. We all know that. That's why we love him. But he was up against the best of the best. Well, this is another case of where you can kind of look at stats and pick here and there and everywhere and make anybody look bad or make anybody look good. It happened with Orlando Brown Jr. It's happened everywhere. Right. You can do it with Snead. Uh, but, yeah, it's not a knock against Snead, but he did have the most flags, Stephen James, with five. I would expect them to have more flags than a safety or a linebacker who's not in coverage as much. Uh, Julia... Colton, Julia Gulia comes out and says, Lucas Nyang is the DiCaprio boodle of the offensive tackles, Steve. That's in reference to our uh, our last video about Lucas Nyang. Possibly we think he should be a trade target. Took a lot of, of heat for that, man. A lot of people talking. I didn't know Chiefs Kingdom was so big on Lucas Nyang. They were saying he was the best backup we had. He played exceptionally well. Like, they're ready to give this guy 10 years to prove himself. So the thing about that is, is they're just flat out wrong. Like, we have pretty good depth at the O-line right now, and now would be the time to to get him out of here, right? He hasn't yet to contribute whatsoever. Uh, he played decent when he actually played. He's I would not say he played good. He's a serviceable guy. He Like, like he at best, he's your backup in case somebody goes down. But right now we have good depth. Do I think we should trade Lucas Yang? If you can get something for yes. him, yes. But I highly doubt anybody wants him. So I, I'm not really sure what's going to go on there. He could be a surprise cut this year. Yeah, I was thinking that too. A lot of people are saying he's better than Prince Tega. A lot of people are saying he's nah. better better than Darian Kennard. I understand the Kennard nah. concerns. 
I, I get that, but I don't think they're going to give up on Kennard in year two after keeping him on the roster last year, which I thought was a little more competitive. Like, Darian was right on that, that toe. He was towing the line last year on the cut, and uh, he made it. But I do believe our – I believe our offensive line as a whole is better. And a lot of people are saying, well, Lucas Nyang can back up everybody on that line. Well, so can Wanye Morris, the rookie that we just drafted. And Darian Kennard can pretty much do that as well. Um, so right. I think I'm with you. If now's the time to get rid of him, and I think we could save 900 k something like that against the cap, um, I would do it if I could do it. And if not, he is a surprise uh, cut in our opinion. So moving along here, Dustin Wilson he says, I think Niang is the type of player that would rather get paid to practice and be a backup rather than do what it takes to be a starter. <laughs> and, Steve, this is exactly kind of the feeling that we've got from him. Yeah, I think a lot of Chiefs Kingdoms getting that vibe from from him, and, and that's why they're kind of down on him right now uh, with good reason because he literally what he's been able to produce since he's been in the league, this is what it makes you think. Like, this guy doesn't really care that much. There's so many people that say, we don't even know if Lucas Yang wants to play or wants to be on the field. He, he He's just not getting that across to the fans. He's not showing any drive or passion or anything like that. Uh, he sat out COVID year. He had his injury concerns. Everybody just knows Lucas Yang is a guy that's not going to be playing. He's not reliable. That translates into Chiefs Kingdom thinking that he doesn't even want to play. Uh, it's just going to be another Clyde Edwards-Alaire situation eventually where they're just like, hey, we don't like this guy. He don't even want to be a Chief, so why is he here? Right, that's... That's kind of the thing that I get from him. He, the whole COVID thing. But a lot of people said he was recovering from cancer at the time. Was that a thing? I don't remember that. If he was, and that's why he set out COVID. That's why he fell in the draft. Okay. Like, maybe that's yes. a good reason that he set out COVID. Maybe it was that I'm whole not, thing. I'm not knocking this guy. Right. I'm not knocking this guy for anything, any of the decisions that he made for himself. Because he knows right. himself better than we all do. So whatever he decisions he made, I'm not knocking him for that. I'm just saying the perception that's out there for the fans now because of some of the decisions maybe he had to make. That was like Tardif actually took off the whole COVID year to go be a doctor in Canada during that. Yeah. And the Chiefs ended up trading him. I don't know if it was for that reason, but it still all comes to the same thing. If you're not available and you're not reliable, it's tough to give you a roster spot everywhere uh, or every season. Uh, moving on, Steve Atkins. He says Felix could be similar to Neil Smith. This is asked about Whoa. which rookie – could have the biggest impact. <laughs> That's a bold statement, Steve Atkins. Felix yes, could it be is. Neil Smith. I would love it, baby. If he could be Neil Smith, that'd be nuts. Uh, was Neil Smith like around that size? I can't really remember off the top of my head. I don't know what they're like in physical stature. I don't know or anything, what his what his size but, is right off the top of my head. But when I think of Neil Smith, I think of a monster. Like to me, he seemed big and thick, and I don't know. Like, well, I feel like Felix. I think is a what Steve smaller. was getting at. I think what Steve's getting at is just his knack for getting to the quarterback. The game he record. just has a natural ability to get to the freaking quarterback. It might be unorthodox. It might be perfectly textbook. But guess what? Felix is going to get to that quarterback one way or the freaking other. That's kind of what Neil Smith did. So I don't think it's a bad comparison. I, I see there's a high ceiling for Felix and Yudiko Zama in this league, and he could definitely hit that. I think Felix's floor is about three to four sacks this year but I think his ceiling could be 8 to 10. That's how good he right. could be. And so we're not yes, knocking sir. Felix. We're just saying, hey, the opportunity is not as great for him as it was for George Karloftis last year. We were a little more thin last year. We needed George Karloftis a little more than we actually need Felix because of the signing of Charles Aminahieu and the way he plays. Uh, moving on, Steve. Um, Brittany Mahomes is taking a lot of heat uh, for her swimming with the dolphins. <laughs> now, allegedly she tweeted this out at 10 AM yesterday. We cannot confirm or deny it. She says, y'all can made suck this, didn't you? my PETA at PETA. Um, did I make it? No. Uh, did she say Are it? You... I'm not for sure. I couldn't find it on her Twitter. No. So my sources could not be verified, Steve, but, what? uh, was she wrong? You know, was she wrong? Like give her a break. She went to swim with some dolphins, dude, like chill out. She wasn't eating tuna in front of the dolphins. Everyone knows. Everyone knows that's just one of those organizations that like to suck the life and joy out of everyone in the world. Out of life. You know? So it is, it is what it is. But I know she didn't actually say that, but I wish that she would have hey, because that would have been the perfect response. If, suck my pita. If she didn't say it, we'll say it for her. And I hope <laughs> Peter sees this because mind your business. Stay in your lane. Yeah. And uh, by the way, hypothetical Brittany, if you did this, you lobbed it up to us, and we're going to dunk it. This is for Brittany, baby. Boom! 
Boom shakalaka. Shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. Good job, Brittany. And with that, time was yours. That time's yours. I love the time's yours segment, Steve. It, it's fun. Uh, moving along here, we got the Chiefs linebacker Drew Tranquil details Andy Reid's free agency pursuit. Andy apparently texted him the day of and said, think red, think Super Bowls. Isn't that incredible <laughs> that Andy Reid's out Beautiful. here recruiting like that? Well, I mean, he's he's got to do it, man, because who are you going to listen to? Like, if you, if you were a free Big agent... Red. Are you going to not listen to Big Red? I mean, this guy is the wisest man in the entire football league. He's the best coach. Bill Belichick can suck it. He's a cheater. He's not even on the same level as Andy Reid. So I think this is a guy that they're listening to, man. I love it. I love that he's involved like that. Right. I like it, too. Uh, you always listen to the walrus. I'm sure Pete will be out here talking about the walrus, too. Uh, feeding the walrus cheeseburgers. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, listen. 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 You, can su- you can suck my pita. Time's yours. Time's yours. Uh, They also asked Drew Tranquil a little bit about his versatility, Steve. Uh, This is a quote. He said, I think one of my key traits is my versatility, my ability to defend the run, to play against the pass, to play man-to-man or zone, to make plays on the ball down the field. Then I think one of the things that kind of sets me apart as a linebacker is my ability to rush the passer. Spags obviously does a lot of different things with blitzes, so I'm excited to see what we're able to put together. We've been saying this since day one, Steve. Drew Tranquil's, uh, the reason he makes our linebackers such a better group is his versatility. He can cover the slot. He can go back to safety. This guy, he can blitz. He can do everything. Drew Tranquil is going to be exciting to watch. He's going to be electric this year. 100%, man. It's going to be nice to have somebody on that team uh, that's a linebacker that can, that can cover, that can cover. I mean, that's what we've been missing, right? Uh, we know Willie Gay is pretty good in coverage, and Willie Gay can get from sideline to sideline pretty quick. But now we have two of those cats, man. And our linebacker room is looking awesome this year. I'm excited about it. I think Nick Bolton and even Leo Chanel are going to benefit from Drew Tranquil uh, because he can play like that. That's going to let them play more downhill and more their style of football. I think we're going to see more aggressive Nick Bolton and a more aggressive Leo Chanel this year. I'm excited about this defense, baby. Me too. He went on to say, I just love what Spags does with his players. He puts them in positions to be successful. I think one of my key traits is versatility. And then he goes on to say that. But he says Spags obviously does a lot of different things with blitzes, so I'm excited to see what we're capable or what we're able to put together and try to get back-to-back champions here. So I, he speaks really highly of Spags. Um, I think it surprised a lot of people when I said this coming up season, if the Chiefs get into the top 10, top 5 defenses like I think they will, Spags made a comment last year that he'd love to be a head coach again. And I said, if we can get to a top five defense, Spags may be out of Kansas City next season. So you guys need, need to uh, respect Spags this year. Uh, just enjoy this appreciate defense. Appreciate this man while he's right, still around. Appreciate him because I'm telling you, if we have a good defense, and I think we will, Spags may take another head coaching opportunity, opportunity if, he's, if it's offered to him. Let's put it that way. Well, He hasn't look, always been the best I just coach. don't want there to be – I just don't want there to be a, a bunch of Chiefs Kingdom out there this year come week eight staying to fire the man. Because yeah, he on. has been, dude, since Spags has been here, we've won two Super Bowls. Like, let's get this straight. This man is a genius calling a defense. He's the equivalent of Andy Reid on the offense. Uh, I know PFF came out with our top defensive play callers, and they had Spags at number five, and I think that was bullcrap. I think Spags He probably should have been a little higher. Probably number one He's right up there i don't I know i mean you can, you can argue it you, you can argue i'll let you argue want, i'll let you but, argue it but this man since he's been with the chiefs has been in the afc championship game every year and won two super bowls and played in another super bowl he won with the giants as well this guy knows what he's freaking doing but i'm with you man if he is interested in being a head coach again it's only a matter of time because he's killing it in kc but i'm loving it while he's here right and speaking of head coaches that are awesome Andy Reid, the walrus, he doesn't get enough love, Steve. But Michael Vick actually come to his defense today. Uh, Michael Vick makes a fiery assertion about KC Chiefs head coach Andy Reid's legacy. This is what he had to say. I was actually thinking this year after Andy won the Super Bowl, he's only got two rings. But he went to like four or five NFC Championship games. And every year, y'all, we're in the AFC Championship game. He was talking to Tyreek Hill on Tyreek's podcast. Uh, he might be the greatest coach of all time. You don't have to win championships to be considered. You know, I understand Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and that whole dynamic. 
but Coach did it in Philly, and now he's doing it in KC. I'm always going to shout out Coach. I love that man to death. Like, for real, literally, I'd do anything for him. Dude, Michael Vick, all of Andy Reid's uh, players, past or present, speak so highly of Andy as a high-character guy. Like, he's just a good dude. He knows how to coach a team. I'm glad that somebody is sticking up for him because, let's be honest, Bill Belichick's entire career was made off Tom Brady. But Andy Reid's done this before Patrick Mahomes, and he would do it after Patrick Mahomes if he somehow outlived him to 200 and uh, Pat retires, you know. Andy Reid is a player's coach. He is the, That is the definition of player's coach. These guys love him. Uh, he's great at teaching the game. He's great at communicating with all different types of people. This guy just has it. That's why he's such a good coach, man. That's exactly what it is. I love Andy Reid. I love him. Uh, let's move on to the next story here, Steve. Uh, Arrowhead Addict come out and said, we got three undrafted free agents most likely to make the active roster. I'm just going to run them down. We'll tell, you know, I want to see if you agree. I want to see if you disagree. I want to see what your percentage are they make the team. Number three, they went with Truman Jones, defensive end from Harvard. Like offensive linemen, you can never have enough D linemen. With Charles O'Minihue, Carl Loftus, and Yudike Uzoma, and Mike Dana locking up the top four spots, this too will be a tough unit to crack. They went on to say that Malik Herring, Joshua Kando could be on the way out, and maybe Truman Jones sneaks a spot in. What do you think? Well, one of the things they said is true. I do think Joshua Kando and Malik Herring are on their way out of Kansas City. I think they're getting cut this year, but I do not think there's room for Truman Jones. I think if they add anybody else uh, to that defensive end room, it's going to be some kind of a vet. If they can get Carlos Dunlap back for a year or something like that, I could see them making that move. I just don't think Truman Jones is going to be able to do it. I'm not saying it's like 100% not possible, but he's going to have to play his ass off, dude, well, to make that. A lot of people are saying B.J. Thompson's going to be good. A lot of people are saying B.J. Thompson's going to get cut too. Uh, we drafted B.J. Thompson. We we traded up to get B.J. Thompson. I don't think you can send a guy to the practice squad that you traded up to get. I don't see that happening. I think B.J. Thompson is going to make the roster. I think he's the fifth. And like you said, right. at defensive end, you might you might need to go out and get you a sixth guy that's a little more vet-oriented. But they might just say, look, George Karloftis, uh, he's in his second year. He's the vet along with Charles O'Minnehue in his <laughs> fifth year. Let's just roll with it. It's a youth movement. So maybe Truman Jones could sneak on at the sixth. Who knows? He kind of – he gives you a little bit – I'll tell you what Truman Jones gives you. He gives you rawness. He gives you a little bit of what that Jared Allen could have given us a few years ago when nobody knew Jared Allen and then he come in and just took it by storm. It'd be nice to see a guy like Truman Jones do something like that. Let's move on to number two. They picked Isaiah Moore, linebacker, North Carolina State. Isaiah Moore's college stats will wow you. In 55 games played, the three-time team captain tallied 341 tackles, 43.5 for a loss, and 11.5 sacks as a middle linebacker. He's a player in the Nick Bolton mold in terms of being more of a downhill run stuffer and solid blitzer rather than being great in coverage. Steve, I'm a huge Isaiah Moore fan. I've already said that he was a dark horse to make the 53, man. So I'm all on board with this one. It really just depends on how many linebackers they take on the 53-man roster. Agreed. Because if they stick with four, it's not happening. Agreed. That's already set in stone. So, I mean, if they want to go ahead and take five linebackers and, and be able to get the special teams abilities out of him and then also have him in case one of the other guys go down, then maybe. But, I mean, if they stick with four linebackers, I, I don't see it happening. Well, here's my thing. They've already said that he plays more of the middle linebacker style. Uh, Drew Tranquil's probably not going to do that. Drew Tranquil's more the outside roam, you know, like Willie Gay. Willie Gay's not going to do that either. So that would have to be Leo Chanel could have to step in if something were to happen to Nick Bolton. Right. He can do that. I, I really do firmly believe that uh, Leo Chanel can do that. Leo's got that in his game. He's a good tackler. I think he only missed like three tackles, four tackles all last year. He's a good tackler, so I'm with you. I think if these guys can offer a little bit of special teams, uh, that could be their saving grace to make this roster. Uh, number one, I think, is no surprise. Uh, you can probably guess who it is, Steve. It's uh, Daenerys Prince. It's Daenerys Prince. According to Twitter, Daenerys Prince is all but a lock to make the 53-man. The official Chiefs Twitter account themselves are not muting the hype either. Here's a post from the Chiefs official account, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they went on to show something that the Chiefs were hyping them up. Steve, Daenerys Prince... We had him at a 50-50. A few weeks later, we moved him up to 75%. We're, I mean, I'm at like 85-90%. This guy makes the roster. Where are you at? Are you still with me? 
I'm at 100 percent that he will make the roster. 100. Okay. I mean, you have to be unless something changes with the running back room. It's 100 percent. I guarantee you they'll take four running backs again. There's no reason not to, especially with the injury concerns. Right. Clyde has an injury history. Isaiah Pacheco's coming off some injuries that we we learned about after the season. Yes. And then also Jarek McKinnon has a laundry list of injuries that he's had over his career. So you have to have that fourth guy. That's why Ronald Jones was on the team last year. Granted, he didn't get to play much, didn't produce much, but he didn't have to. And that's the beauty of it. So are you saying it's Prince a lot? doesn't have to. Yes, it's a lot. It's a lot. He will be our return man. What about LaMichael P. Ryan? No one cares about LaMichael P. Ryan. Hey. Uh, Daneric Prince is going to be your kick returner. Yes. And he will get on the field as far as being a running back if need be. So if there are some injuries or maybe somebody needs a rest or, or maybe they just have a certain package they want to implement him into the game and see how he does, you're going to see him play this coming year. If they if they don't change something up with the running back room, he's 100% going to make this roster. Right. Well, before we head out here, we got one more thing. Um, I should just start making this a daily segment called the Bengals Fan DA of the Day. I think we can all figure <laughs> out what DA means. Um, Bengals, he's a dumbass. Bengals for life. On look at the look at the new the way they've stooped. If you wipe away rings, which spelled rungs, and Super Bowl appearances, <laughs> is there a better all around quarterback than Joe Burrow? No, there isn't. So if you take away all the rings and the Super Bowls, take away. Stats. If, just take away everything. If you poke accomplishments. Your eyes out, and you take away every accomplishment in the game. Doesn't that mean Achilles hey. Smith has a has a crack at it? If you Mike, take away rings and Super Bowl appearances, if the quarterbacks don't have to play quarterback anymore and they just stand there, Joe Burrow's the best one in the league, right? Bengals for life. Can you believe people actually follow Idiots. this crash? They need some binkies, brother. That's what they need. Dude, uh, the I, I don't understand why they continue to come up with dumb stuff. Like, I, I'm honestly torn right now. I don't know who annoys me the most. Bengals fans who continue to try to make things up to make Joe Burrow more, you know, something more than he is. And they need that binky shoved right in their mouth. Or the Eagles fans and the Eagles players who cannot get over getting that ass whipped Dude, in the Super Bowl, baby. It, they can't do it. They're just crying together. They're laying in bed together, stroking each other's heads, crying, Mike. That's what they're doing. Brandon Graham, C.J. Gardner, Johnson. Did you say stroking each other's heads? Yep, I sure did. Thanks for subscribing and hitting that bell. See you next time. I, 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 I,